What is going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another video. Finally gonna get back to daily uploads. I know I've said this like four times, but my goal is to do a daily upload every day this year. And I have a ton of content coming for you guys, so there's no reason I can't. I have some parts for the KTM I need to install. We're gonna do an exhaust mod on the KTM. I gotta do the airbox mod on the Grom. I got the Scott's project for the S1000 I gotta get on. And I also have the heavy clutch springs for the Grom that I need to get in. That way I can start doing some better wheelies with that thing. As far as today's video though, we are gonna do the oil change on the BMW. I finally have insurance for all my bikes. That's one of the reasons I haven't been riding as well is when I moved to Arizona for some reason with my accident, all the insurance companies were trying to charge me like almost $8,000 a year for insurance, which is ridiculous. That's more than I pay. That's like more than double what I pay for the M2 in the truck, which is absurd but I finally got my lawyers to get that insurance back down to what it properly should be. So now all the bikes are insured so I can finally start riding again. But let's go ahead and get the S1000 ready to ride. I need to check all the tire pressures too. I think the tires might be a little low. These bikes have been sitting for so long. I need to get the gas moving in these bikes. Gas will go bad in these bikes after like maybe three months. So, and I think I'm right around two months. So I need to go ride these things. Cool. I think I got to take off this lower belly and I think that'll be it. I hope so. We'll see. That's why it's nice to have Ryobi tools sometimes. Cause that way when you're working on something fragile like this, you don't have to worry about stripping stuff because it's a Ryobi, doesn't have enough power to. This is the most expensive oil change I've done ever. This oil cost me, the oil and filter cost me a hundred dollars, which is ridiculous. But that's, a lot of people have problems with, um, a lot of people have problems with the BMW engines and the uh, cam chain tensioners, but I personally think that's because a lot of people don't run genuine BMW oil, which is partially, partially conventional, which is a little bit thicker, which helps with the getting pressure to your cam chain tensioner. I'm curious to see what the Grom feels like with the new exhaust. I think it'll be one of the reasons I was having such a hard time on like hill climbs and stuff with that bike, is you couldn't hear the exhaust note. So it's hard to know where your RPMs were. But now that I have the, the full exhaust, I think I'll be able to hear it better, which I think will help with like doing wheelies and stuff. We will see. I can't wait to get the exhaust on this thing. I'll try to get that done in the next couple of days. I just want to do it. I think it's going to be easier to access the oil filter from the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and put this side back on actually. All right, I'm going to flip the bike around. So I'm going to do the other side. Sometimes it's nice to get the kickstand a smidge higher. Yeah, there you go. That helps just get the bike more upright for doing oil changes and stuff. You just gotta make sure you're not too much, but that should be good. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Alright, and then there's these two little Phillips in the back. Those guys out. A lot of people don't even know this, but the BMW has this right here. It opens and closes the exhaust to let different amount of pops and noises come out. That's why you, when you like change modes and stuff, it changes how that works. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the other side off just because it's really oily and dirty down there. So while I have the fairings, so while I have the fairings off, I'm gonna just go ahead and power wash down there and degrease all that and all that type of stuff. Especially since I already took the other side pretty much all the way out. It's hard to tell if there's oil leaks and stuff when the motor's dirty. So I like just keeping my motors clean for that reason. Okay, now the fun part. And it'll fit. Barely. Making sure have the cap off this time. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and crack it. I'm just gonna crack it, and then I'll put this in. Cap I'll put 
this in. There's no way I'm not getting my hands covered now on this one. I actually didn't do that bad. Cool. Oil looks good. No flakes. Not super foggy. Awesome. And I always like to put it upright, make sure I'm getting all the oil out. All right, and then while that is in a finished draining, we can go ahead and take off the oil filter. Uh, usually, you'd want to put down like some sort of tin foil or whatever to not let it get on the exhaust, but since I'm going to go power wash it and degrease the whole engine bay afterwards, I'm not really worried about oil spilling. BMW probably put this onto the wrench. Usually oil filters are hand tight, but oh, the last one was done by the dealer and I think they put it on really snug. Oh man, okay. Oh, so close. Okay, I guess we're gonna have to do the puncture method. For that, you just get a flat head here, put it on, and get a trusty hammer. actually rotated. Oh. I guess I'm just gonna go get an oil filter wrench. I thought I was gonna be able to get it off by puncturing it, but there's just not enough room. It's such a tight oil filter. So I'm just gonna go get an oil fil filter wrench. There's probably a part from BMW that's a special wrench that you need, but. All right, I just got back from AutoZone. I got a proper wrench. Makes this process a whole lot easier. Let's see, I should pull that off. It's such an unbelievably tight oil filter. There's no reason an oil filter should be this tight. Oh, there it goes, moving. Jeez. I wonder who put this on. Yeah, I think it was the dealer, but it's torque, it was torqued to like 80 foot pound. All right, let's get the new filter ready to go. The way I do my oil changes is I drain the oil first, then I do the old filter, then I install the new filter, and then I'll put the drain plug back on, and then I'll fill it up. As far as putting in the new filter, I like to put a little bit of oil in it. Some people say it's not necessary. I personally just prefer to do it. It's worth the couple seconds it takes. Just pour some oil, wet your filter. Some people say you don't need to do it, but I don't know. I think it's worth it and it takes like five seconds. All right, and then before you install your new filter, it's always a good idea to just take a little bit of oil and run it around the O-ring and just help to make sure it seats up nice. I like to usually just do mine hand tight. Oh, there we go. On pretty much tight as I can go. Now I need to replace the washer on the drain plug and then I'll get the new drain plug. You get the drain plug put back in and then we'll fill it up and be good to go. This is also a great sign. This is a magnetic drain plug and there's no, almost no shavings on there. It's always a good idea to wipe that off between oil changes. That way you know, yeah, there's almost no shavings on there. Looks great. You guys can see, the, here's the old washer, here's the new one. The new one is a little bit thicker and not as wide. That's because these are crush washers. So every time on every single vehicle you ever do an oil change on, you want to replace this because you're crushing this thin, this soft metal in between the harder metal of your case and your bolt. And that's what creates a seal. So always replace that. Okay, now I can go ahead and pull this out. And then wipe up where it's still dripping oil. Like I said, I'm gonna power wash it, but this is just to make sure I don't get any oil on the garage floor. A good rule of thumb when you're doing drain plugs is put it in, tighten it until it stops, and then all you wanna do is crush that crush washer. You don't need much. That right there, that should be nice. Cool, that should be nice and crushed. Everything's good to go. Now we just need to top it off in oil. And then you wanna make sure your funnel's nice and clean. And let's get it topped off. And the spy glass is on the other side. Oh my gosh, everything on this bike is over torqued. 
Oh, jeez. Whoever put that fill cap on, put it to like 50 foot pounds, it's ridiculous. All right, we'll start with one and I'll check it every once in a while. A lot of you guys, you gotta, you gotta remember too, my, um, I have what's called, like, I guess what's technically would be a higher mileage S1000. Mine has like roughly 20,000 miles on it and there's still zero metal shavings in the oil. That's right when these engines are getting broken in. Number two. Stuff costs as much as fine wine. It's report like it's fine wine. It's actually starting to show just a smidge, but it is leaning slightly this way, so I'm gonna get it close and then I'll straighten it up as I pour in the last little bit. All right, so I ended up taking about three and a quarter. So there I have, yeah, it's right there. So it took like a little over three, that's perfect. Now I've oiled the to top it off if I need to, and I still will need to add more probably after I start it and do like a half heat cycle. It'll probably use up a little bit. And just get it all spread through the motor. All right guys, that is gonna be it for the oil change. Now this thing's ready to go and ride. All I gotta do is check tire pressure and then finally be back to riding and back to having fun. I will see you guys in the next one.